The legendary bell. Uh-oh. It's time to start the podcast. Uh, this is Pop-Up Podcast. Bob Rivers here with my son, comic Andrew Rivers. Greetings. It's kind of a, I think it's a kind of a cool banner weekend for us uh, because you uh, did your first headlining show at Wise Guy Comedy Club in Las Vegas. Uh, for those of you who don't know where that is, it's, uh, it's near the dump. <laughs> No, right next to my career. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's actually it's uh, right near the Strat, and it's a cool little club. And uh, well, they have two locations as well. So this was the Arts District. That's right, and there's one at the um, Town Square, Town Square Mall. And uh, so, so Lisa and I went to the first show, which was I didn't know uh, the roast of Tom Brady, uh, except for his dad was Tom Brady. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> it was great. I, I mean, get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, they had to get it. No, it took me a long time. <laughs> so, um, all the jokes are about him. That's the, that's what, yeah. Yeah. It was the roast of Bob Rivers. But, uh, I loved it. I, uh, I used to get my feelings hurt and not anymore. I mean, well, feel... you, you get the best lines in the show. So, well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> and most of the stuff. Uh, that he says is a pretty accurate. There's yeah. A, yeah. I was curious of uh, your reaction to it and your, you know, do you feel misrepresented? Do you feel like, you know? Well, uh, all right. I don't want to give up too much because <laughs> this is part of your set now, right? Sure. I okay. mean, it's, yeah. yeah. No one's going to come to the show and be like, I heard three minutes about this on a podcast. I'm spoiled. The part that you got wrong uh and it was and it's very human of you uh, there are so many details that you you use the actual real life details mm -hmm. on me and they're funny because i and i do try to be funny about it but that's how i'm coping with cancer that's yeah. how i've been coping with it's inspirational that's how i've been but, coping uh... with your mother <laughs> 42 years <laughs> she, she, oh, there she is oh, shit. there's a picture she didn't hear that <laughs> no you know what if she could watch the roast of tom brady there's yeah. nothing i could do to She's her been a, a giggling giggling mood all weekend okay so uh behind the scenes we moved here to las vegas a couple of years ago so that it would be easier to visit and see our offspring so that we could not pay a lot of taxes and also we'd never lived in an area known for its sunshine and dryness um and it has worked out pretty well and and what started to happen is andrew kept coming to visit and when he would visit he would know some comic and they would put you on stage and you would do a guest set mm -hmm. and so we would go watch to see 10 minutes or 20 or whatever the maximum yep. is and uh, which other clubs were you? Well, we did. Uh, you saw me at Jimmy Kimmel with Craig Gass, probably. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> um, did you do one at the Strat? I did, but you didn't. You didn't come watch that. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, nauseous that night. I mean, it's and it, I was sure your comedy would. Well, <laughs> not <help>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the headliner was Corey Michaelis, so that would have been making us both vomit. Oh, but, I, uh, I love Corey though. Yeah, he's great. He's a fun boy. Okay, so uh, anyway, what happens is we go to a, a club. Maybe it's the third or fourth time we go to see comedy here, and some, and this has happened every time. Someone comes up to Andrew and says. You know, they're walking over to the table and they say, you're Andrew Rivers. Oh, you're one of my favorite comics. And they could be from anywhere in the country because no one, you know, in Vegas didn't fly here because they don't know how to do math. <laughs> I think that's why they fly here. That's exactly To why. gamble because they don't know how to do math. Yeah. So uh, at the third or fourth club we went to, Wise Guys, one of the managers came up and said, uh, Hey, Andrew, how you doing? And um, she knew you from a different club. Yeah, she used to manage the Salt Lake City location. This is what it's good to have sort of franchisees mm. <clears throat> that will, uh, you know, you make make rounds early on in your career. And then, you know, people uh, people stick around in this business yeah, I, yeah, in yeah. some some capacity. And the ones who run the comedy clubs really love comedy. Yeah, because they're not billionaires. Well, they, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, no one's getting rich off comedy. Mm. Um, Except for Kevin Hart, <laughs> Chris Rock, and, yes. uh, you know, and the, Taylor, the one percenters, you and know. Taylor Tomlinson. We have to mention her. Sure. Uh, she's like, this is a, this is a uh, comic young gal who blew up mm. on the internet 
who we saw co-headline with you, what, probably about six yes. years ago. Well, I it was probably longer than that, but um, yeah, combined now we've 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 generated millions of revenue. So mm. between, combined, but yeah, between the both of us. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, oh, I, by the way, is she burning herself out by doing that CBS show? Probably. Yeah. I got to think, I, I think they record like three at a time. And it's a game show with other comics. You mm -hmm. should get on that. Yeah. <laughs> cool. You've got Have a, you heard of SNL? You should try out. Yeah. yeah. You you should stop having an unlisted number, first off. That's getting <laughs> that's, your way. That's really the problem. Uh, anyway, I'm very proud of you, son. We went to the show the other night. Now, and by the way, this will be coming out midweek. So you also just finished a podcast with a celebrity. Yeah, uh, Craig Ferguson. Uh, tomorrow. Um, That's when you're recording. Yeah, we record tomorrow, and uh, I don't know when he'll put that out, but. Um, yeah, that that's exciting. You know, mm. that I figured this would be a fun warm up podcast. You know, does I, he know you, Craig? Uh, I mean, I just worked with him in Tacoma, and or did he, he have a last minute cancellation and I, he had to fill the spot? I, you know, it, it. We were just in the green room and mentioning about how late night doesn't even pay anymore, and you know things aren't as good in show business as they used to. I said, "Oh, you have a podcast?" He right, said, "Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah." Mm. And then he just randomly was like, you should be on the podcast. Oh. And then I was like, okay. Comic and then he looked at his manager and he was like, whoa, just, yeah, 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 just yeah. joke. Com so, Comics are generally very nice to each other. Is that a true statement? Sure. I think you have a kindred spirit or, um, you know, you belong to a community because you have shared experiences and like radio boot camp for you, like w wherever you go in the world, if you run into a comedian, you have a shared set of experiences and you have a you speak the same language almost. Yes, yeah. It's like going on a, a you know, you're on this voyage, you're on, on a spaceship. You're on this hike where <laughs> frequently you yes. don't know anybody. Yes. And suddenly you meet a joke Sherpa that you've seen somewhere on another mountain. Absolutely. Yes. And 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 especially early on in your career, you're you're at the same open mics with everybody. You're all in mm. this community. And then when you get to a paying level, you got to go to Tallahassee. He's got to go to mm. Tennessee. You know, your best friend is in Brooklyn and then people move to LA. And so you're really not, even if you both live in Seattle, you're just not seeing each other all the time. And so now you're going to uh, be in LA next couple of days. Yeah. You're going to crash. <clears throat> at Christopher Titus's house, kind of be like his, um, who was the guy who crashed at OJ's house? Um, <laughs> I can't remember. I don't know. Uh, but you're going to be living on his couch for a few days. Well, yeah, I'm going to stay with Keith for a couple of days. They, they, they specifically used the word one night you can stay. Oh, so okay. I just, yeah. um, you know, some people don't get those subtle hints. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, would you like to come visit for one night yeah yeah we would love to have you for one night and while you're here about two hours yeah that we talk to each other yeah. then you could go find go go on your computer you and, have uh, a computer you, why you, is there a checkout slip under my door in the morning that seems weird <laughs> that's neat though one of the things i like about you visiting us is it's a working trip for you and so we don't have to entertain you kind uh, you know kind of all the time and you're having fun. Well, but... I wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't want you to entertain me the whole time. <laughs> Increasingly, audiences agree. Um, so, uh, but, I but... get a lot of requests for the podcast to come back. So I'm, I'm, I, oh, I, I'm glad good. I finally bullied you into it. Oh, you didn't have to. It was my idea. But, um, you know, for about four or five months there, my chemo symptoms. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, I'm not complaining. I, I never complain about anything. <laughs> That's I've had. What, that, yeah. by the way, can I give you your props? Like yeah. for an old guy with a Facebook account, you didn't share pictures. You didn't no. You didn't complain. It just even with cancer, you've set an unrealistic standard for me to live up to. <laughs> Good. So. I hope to continue doing that. <laughs> uh, no, it, what it is is look. At this age, most people you know have a health issue, and you can sit and talk about it. And you know. He, Humanity, civilization, and specifically our tiny corner in it, the divided states of America, uh, we have the worst food, the worst diet. Uh, it's almost as if 
big medicine got together with big food and said, I'll tell you what, uh, big food, <laughs> you make stuff that gives people chronic conditions but doesn't quite kill them, and that will be good for us because in their final two or three decades, we're going to make mint. Shall we shake on it? <laughs> <laughs> Just a guess. Yeah. This has been a reenactment. <laughs> a reenactment of the Big Food, Big Pharma Summit. What do you think about the world these days? You're uh, almost 40 years old, and I apologize. We're leaving you a really shitty world. Um, you know, I think, I, I mean, I kind of joked about this, but I think things have just generally been the same. I just think we have access to the information of all the awful things going on in the world. So, you know, you can watch a war on TikTok now and it feels more real and that's why young people are sort of radicalized because they're seeing all this stuff going on and it's awful and they don't know how to make any changes because the power structure prevents that yeah. and so uh great observation by the way and i have been i don't want to say thrilled or happy <laughs> Uh, but I have been, um, it has given me hope that young people are finally protesting something, having their own voice, going against, you know, in our case, it was Richard Nixon uh, with the war in Vietnam. They're going against what the power structures are doing, the military industrial complex. I know you do some reading. It's probably too deep for your audiences, but let's throw it out there. Hey, <clears throat> the, the, a huge part of our economy, about one sixth of it, is based on building weapons. Yeah, killing people. It's a little silly armed... where where they're like, you know, I mean, the war for Israel is, you know, this big like Biden's getting in trouble because of it, and it's not something he can necessarily control. But then we're selling them the weapons. Yeah. But now we're. We're saying, well, we're not going to give you the weapons if you're going to use them to blow people up. And it's kind of like, well, what, did, what do you what think weapons think? are for? The, yeah. yeah, we're in the weapons <clears throat> business, you know. Well, it's all about perception. And that's what, and I think the protests are having an impact. For sure. But the protests also cause us to ask other deeper questions uh, because we've always had an issue with anti-Semitism, which, of course, was at its worst during World War II and, and had the horrific atrocities of Hitler. And now there's still some anti there's some anti anything there's some anti it's some anti Andrew there's Rivers some anti forty year olds with long hair <laughs> yeah. out there, um, and so what's going on with this? I wish people would protest at my show that would increase my numbers. Yeah, so what's going on with this is uh, you know Israel is was attacked viciously had a right to go back and defend themselves if you if you think that war rights are like right. No, I mean, when when we got attacked, we didn't just go bomb another country and murder a bunch of civilians and, you know, stay over there for 20 years. I mean, we would never do something like that. No, so. we would send them the <laughs> weapons to fight yes, each yes, other. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That's By a way, much more humane way to do it. But that's it. That's right. what I see. That's what we do now. We are the um, we are one side in two proxy wars yeah. in the world. And one of them is so bad that they're, yeah. they're using the genocide word. Yeah. And the other one is, you know, Russia versus the U.S. That's as old as Elvis Presley and Frank Sinatra. And far as far as, you know, that's a hit record that plays. Um, so I uh, yeah. So I'm generally down on it all, by the way. And I and I don't pay too much attention to the news because to me and I know I'm going to sound like a conspiracy nut. It's all pretty much propaganda. Well, yeah. <clears throat> and in our country, USA, USA, the propaganda has to tell us that we're the good guys. Yeah. The difference between war now and war when I was a youngster, we used to take our graduating high school students and send them to get shot and killed. Turned out that didn't play well. So now... We just send the weapons to other people's high school graduates. Well, <clears throat> and we watch it on TikTok and go, 
well, this is horrible. Yeah. Oh, look. Yeah. Uh, an elephant pooped <laughs> yeah. on a child yeah. at the zoo. <laughs> Holy cow. And we're on the same algorithm, I think. Yeah, yeah we are. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. But that's it's, the world. It's uh, And it's weird to get the it, the dichotomy between what you can see on your news feed is, is interesting, too. And that's, again, going back to the propaganda thing. It's like, well, who's controlling TikTok and what is who's deciding what they get to show you you know because if yeah. it's this there's a lot of debate about it oh if it's somebody with their thumb on the scale you know in china TikTok is all math problems and they're solving and they're you teaching know. their children they're educating yeah. their children with TikTok. but now, you can't in china you can't see alligators eating house cats you can't see that now in are they better are they, or censoring they worse for that it? out in yes, china yes, yes. <laughs> now yeah, so there, now there's arguments to be, I mean, this is such a deep thing, too, where it's like a lot of their kids are raised on memorization. Mm. So, like, that's been their school system, which is, um, you know, has its own benefits. But um, they struggle to, I think, create or problem solve over there. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah there are... Um... You know, and here in the United States, we have the have yachts and the have nots. Uh, that exists all over the world in every country. By the way, we think other countries are entirely different. Oh, they enslave their people. Yeah, and, well, yeah. They're for free speech. Yeah. And then when you go and travel, it's like they got fast it's, food stores, they got a job, they got a car. They got, it's like it's, almost the same. Yeah. Um, and they think their government is great. Yeah. Because their government told them, oh, the U.S., you would not want to live there. Yeah. It's decrepit. It's immoral. It's... Um, everybody is and that's stuffing what we like themselves about it. with ice cream. All <laughs> yes. So far, I am totally <laughs> factual. Where, where do we get to the bad <clears throat> part? I don't know. I know there is some fake news in there. I don't know what it is. So uh, anyway, congratulations on your first uh, Vegas headline. As a parent, to watch all these other comics mm -hmm. first. Yeah, there's the MC. He was good, by the way. Oh. Um, then there was the first comic, a young local comic, who had promise. That's what I said about you 13 years ago. You had promise. And then there was a, a gal who, not, I think she was moved to Vegas. Uh -huh, from San Francisco. And she got a little edgy in the middle of her set. It was very good. And, and then they said, are you ready for your headliner? And, of course, mom and dad are like, <clears throat> uh, yeah, no big deal. <clears throat> food in my loins. Food in my loins. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then you, uh, you really got up and killed. Thank you. Yeah, it was I it was a really good show and because you showed up 5 minutes late I I thought that you were going to be like oh he must have paid this audience like he must have come out and been like my parents are coming just laugh at everything mm. just give me this one but uh but everything went pretty well you know like they laughed at all the right parts sure, and everything sure. everything hit so And then so you know folks then the next day Andrew has either audio or video or both in this case, audio of the show, and he goes over, this is how comedians work. He goes over each joke, you uh, work all day, yeah. and modify them. There's this thing called a tag, where you add a tag to a joke. And comics sometimes give each other tags, mm -hmm. right? Didn't Titus give you a tag or two? I mean, over the years, yeah. And I mean, many and you people. Gave, you gave him one, I think. I gave him a few. Well, I don't yeah. know how well, you know, where they end up sometimes, but um, it's, it, it is tougher, too, as like, it's harder for people to write sort of for you where they're like, Oh, try something like this, you know, cause everyone develops their own style right. and their mm -hmm. own way. It has to be, in your but voice. occasionally like, like the line about, um, you know, when I talked about how you loved Gabriel Rutledge's joke, cause it wasn't one of mine, you know, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. that was a really key line. That's a really key laugh in that spot. Cause there's, there's more silence than normal or, or more on purpose, more setup. Yes. Yeah, to more, build up tension. more setup. And, um, was, I was on tour and I had just written that and I was rehearsing it while my tour, my roommate was in the shower, but the shout, the bathroom was still, he could still hear me. And so he got out of the shower and he was like, I have a tag for you. And then that was the line that he gave me of, of, Hey, add a laugh here where you say it was his favorite joke because it wasn't yours or something like oh, that. Oh, that's nice. So and Gabriel so, helped you with that. Yeah. So he did loan you like someone would loan a next-door neighbor a rake or a shovel. 
Yeah. Or a cup of sugar. Except I get to, yeah, a cup of sugar is good because <laughs> yeah. I get to, I get to keep it. Yeah. Some ingredients good. for the for, the, for the comedy pie. You can't have that joke anymore. <laughs> That's fun. Right. Well, it's great uh, to have you here in Las Vegas. I hope you keep coming back. Thanks. And I hope you uh, get a residency at the Venetian, mm -hmm. like Taylor Tomlinson did. But you're, pro I know you, I, I know you believe this. You probably have to become some minority that checks some boxes. So uh, could it be trans? Could it be? I've already got the hair and the and the pretty face. Um, you know, I I don't a know. A couple of falsies, and you could pull it off. Yeah, I don't know. Um, again, it, it, the internet is going to be the great equalizer in terms of um, if you get a follow. You know, yeah. Really, the the industry is backwards now, where it's like. You know, you used to the industry used to make the man, and yes, now yes. the man makes the like literally. It's the same. Comedy and, clubs are just yeah. in the business of selling alcohol, so it's whoever can fill the, the club, the club yeah, with yeah. people who will buy booze. But and but also whoever fills the club is whoever just blew up on the internet. Sure. And and so it used to be yes, you'd have to convince someone, a curator, mm -hmm. to let you on. It's the same with music, right? Anybody can make music and distribute it globally. And so that's the thing you talk about is like when there was a gatekeeper and 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 for the last couple of years, they've been like very heavily focused on diversity, like all, all these women on TV complaining yeah. about how we never used to let them on TV. And uh... well, that's why I gave you shit, because <laughs> yeah. Taylor Tomlinson is all of a sudden playing at the Venetian for five nights. And I'm like. Well, you were both equals a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, what happened? Yeah. Well, she was a lot more talented and, and worked beautiful harder. And, and uh, could, yeah, easier to look at helps for could sure. Talk but, about female stuff that is interesting. Yeah. Like, I know nothing about what it's like to be a 30 year old woman. But I've been locked in zero mental institutions. <laughs> so, you know, the trade off. That, that's a disadvantage for you. <laughs> Were we too, were we too good of a parent? Yes, that's for you to be a great yes, comic. Yes, yeah. okay. It's, all, it's your fault. Yeah. Um. As as far as the material goes, uh, first of all, it was funny because mom's review or your review was that mom has laughed harder at that show than any other show I've ever done. She did, and she uh, the joke I made. I didn't make the full joke on Facebook. Was the last time she laughed that hard was the last time she saw me naked. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, but I just put shirtless on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not one of those shock jocks on Facebook. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, but no, she she really and you know what it is. You white guys with your dick jokes. Uh, yeah. She uh, seeing you headline in Vegas, knowing what we've had to pay for tickets to see people in Vegas. Yeah, it's like your foot is in the door. The camel toe is yeah. under the tent. Yeah. It's time. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit of a. That's about take it. But that's a that well, analogy requires <laughs> you to do what we talked about, which is you know change your sex. A, <clears throat> a lot of imagination there. Now, the last thing I want to talk about on this brief podcast. Well, is, anyway, mom, yeah. my joke okay. was that she laughed the most at the set because it's all about you being an idiot. So. Yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but she also like loves Tom Brady, and she. Laughed at the time. Yeah, I, I was impressed. Yeah, she, I thought there was she'd lots leave of the room dirty on, jokes and lots of on the fifth or sixth mf -er, Yeah, she's I thought she'd be gone. Yeah, no, she's having a good time. She, she was totally in it. Uh, okay, uh, so the last thing uh, just to mention, and I don't want to get too personal because I don't want to no. mess it up. But uh, <clears throat> Andrew, over the years, has had several girlfriends. Oh boy, or girl acquaintances. Sure. Sometimes you're in the friend zone, like I always was. Oof. Right, we're getting into this section. Yeah, I mean, I was in a friend zone with this girl in high school, and now it's been more than fifty years, and we visit and we chat. And mom and I went over, and her and her husband made us dinner. And I thought, and mom oh. still gets jealous. No, um, she was actually. She, yeah, she was like your girlfriend, and I'm like, sure, a girl and a friend. Yeah. That's if that's threatening to you. Every time I walk off the door, there are vaginas everywhere. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> Um, you, uh, have not, in, in my estimation, ever had a serious long-term girlfriend. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right, you know. answer, one word answers is fine. And then, so, uh, so, and by that, I, and, and I also believe 
And this is still not a serious long-term thing yet. Not yet. So no, it's a serious short-term thing. We're just thing. blowing but, it. But, well, but it's, it's lasted weeks. At least. <laughs> it's good. So, um, but also, you were never um, a player. You were never there at the comedy clubs picking out which waitress you might be able to. I mean, I tried, but they didn't. They weren't that interested. So, you know. Oh. I thought you had higher standards. Sure, I'm, I mean, I'm a, everyone's a good person when it's not being thrown in your face. Uh, okay. It's easy to have the moral high ground when you know no. you don't have any options. I know you better than that because you, you seriously, you could have caught all mm, kinds, all kinds of, of diseases. Dis <laughs> you'd have herpes by now if you were me. And, and back because back before I met your mother, when I was in a band, the the purpose of being in a band, yeah, was. To try to get laid, yeah. To become a great musician. No. I should have learned to play guitar, yeah. So, um, anyway, but uh, this new gal, her, and we could say her name, right? Sure. It's, it's mean, a common name. Yeah. It's Kelly. Uh -huh. uh, she rides horses. Uh -huh. She's very beautiful. <laughs> sure. Um, does she have a vision problem? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she, she doesn't see a future with me. That's the, <laughs> that's the problem. Um, uh, yeah. She's funny. Like, she, she's, yeah. she's funny, too. I yeah. mean. This is the first girl where we like FaceTime, Zoom called. With yeah. Me and your mother, because she just wanted to meet she us. She just happened to be. Mm. I just happened to be hanging out with her on mom's birthday. And so when I FaceTimed mom, mm -hmm. she just happened to pop in. And she's really doing a good way, weaseling her way in. So I can't push her away yet. So. Well, don't you dare push her away. <laughs> I know because, you like listen, this one. dude, your options are not going <laughs> getting bigger as you get older. Your teeth right now yeah. are white, they look great. Yeah. Your hair, not uh -huh. bad yeah. for uh, one of the Nelson brothers. And uh, your face, yeah, you could still clean it up a little bit. But she's, uh, yeah, she's pretty hot uh, as far as the, the, she pushes the right buttons. She's got a sense of humor. She's got her own life, her own passions and hobbies. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm all, f I don't know her. She I be, mean, yeah, she well, be this a is all from a three-minute FaceTime call. <laughs> she, she could be from you're, one you're of those, in love, so. one of those streaming TV shows <laughs> where she's luring you in, so you end up in the dungeon, and then yeah. she serial kills you. Sounds hot, <clears throat> but great material. You know, uh, the good day young. If so. your brother did cop, becomes a comic, uh -huh. so no, she seems uh, wonderful. And when we were on the Zoom call, she was like schmooching with you on the call like it was a pda moment. oh really i didn't yeah. even oh she i don't remember that i mean she, I, i'm, I mean, not, gonna, you know, I'm she, not gonna do it listen, but she was yeah yeah arm around she, me or whatever but snuggling oh there you go and for the first parent meet i thought that was a bold move yeah and um anyway i i like her a lot from just you know 10 minutes of facetiming uh you're the one who gets to decide how to ruin your life <laughs> You do your own. You're the spin the right? wheel of misfortune. <laughs> yes, but she seems very nice, and I think everybody should congratulate you in the comments for having a girlfriend for more than two weeks. Yeah, we're hanging in there. Hi, mom. Mom, do you want to say do you anything? Have any comments? Do you, <clears throat> you have a review of the show or? Uh... Hi. Um, get in here. Come here. Get, get close to a mic. No one sees my face if you're in there. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been listening, but happy Mother's Day to everybody. Yes. Okay. And also to you, Bob, for, for two years of yes. surviving your surgery. Two years since the surgery. That's right. Two years on May 10th and uh, two and a half years since diagnosis. And I am not quite a unicorn yet. You know what the unicorn is? Typically, it's a five-year survival. All right. Because almost nobody. Sure. Uh, but I'm a whatever a halfway to a unicorn is. I'm a... I'm a gelding. I'm you're a gelding. Uh, <laughs> you're, and I'm glad you're here. We right knocked now. it, you know, Thank we you. cut Come it back all. Again. Yeah. <laughs> Although it wasn't in the balls, it was, uh, you know, up here. All right. Anyway. All right. What? <laughs> what? We offended you? We talk about his balls? <laughs> She she just she wasn't actually listening to the joke. She was just staring at Tom Brady's eyes. Yeah. Oh, last night? Yeah. Think so all right well uh but so none of them the, none of the material is uh you don't feel misrepresented you don't no, feel I'll, yeah yeah okay you asked me this the sure. one thing you lied about yeah and it was to protect yourself which is by the way why almost all lies are told i believe in all of humanity check me people if you agree or not um the story of me falling down on the southwest jetway mm -hmm. where you sort of made it like i was um not paying attention you made it like i was uh you know just an idiot for falling down but what really happened that day is that andrew and his mom were so excited to see the brother keith and 
Leanne and the granddaughters. Uh, and here I am sitting there, you know, in a wheelchair, I've got a cane, um, and I'm still not recovered from the neuropathy of chemo, which is what you could fall and kill yourself. Yeah. And, um, and I said, it wasn't about that I wanted a window seat. It was that if you went up with me to go on early, which uh, handicapped people get, uh, and believe me, I, I, I'd really trade not having the cancer for the cool parking <laughs> spot, just so you know. <clears throat> but what you uh, changed the story to was, you said, well, what happened I don't is I want to sit in the exit row. No, I said, you guys can sit in the exit row if you don't go up with me. And then, and you just ran up there anyway because your mother had asked, can we go? She wants the benefit. You, you were go? in line, though. I was sitting down. No, yeah. you were in line. <laughs> this is the whole, this is the, the you, you bugged, brain. How hard did you hit your it head? It remembers the no, story listen, the way the no. PR people inside of you our were head not, want to. Listen, no, put your mom in here for this version of it. It doesn't too. matter because the bottom line was. <laughs> You were you in guys line. ran ahead. I did not lie in this story at all. You guys ran oh, ahead I love this. and abandoned me and left me behind. And I was trying to keep up with you yeah. when I fell and could have killed myself. That's true. That and I was part is mad true. at you that for that. That part is true. I, but I only stay mad for how long? Um, about two hours. <laughs> That's about right. Yes. <laughs> and then the next day, yes. too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wasn't mad about it. In fact, I was laughing about it. But then we then we got to Keith's uh, chiropractor, and Keith wanted to show off a, and give you his new age chiropractor, mm -hmm. who's going to take two hours, you know, with all this phony chiro uh, malpractice uh, stuff. I don't believe Larry in Larry the chiro guy. <laughs> yeah. He's got all sorts <laughs> that's right. of uh, that's right catchphrases and and, uh, and so uh, powers and, on. And you guys leave me in the car. Hey, this and was this yeah. Is, okay. uh, and so I'm sitting in the car all alone. This part of the story should yeah, be told. Sure. I'm sitting in the car all alone. Everybody's abandoned me because, you know, just let the guy with the with the cane sit in the car yeah. for a couple hours. Uh, if he has to poop pee, we'll just change his diaper. <laughs> and We're so, not getting a deposit back on this rental car for sure. <laughs> He hasn't and shit so in Keith, six days. And... Keith was probably feeling a little guilty that I'm sitting in the car. Like, why am I not in there? And he calls me and he says, how are you doing? And I said, well, I feel like a dog that's left at the casino with the window cracked in 90 degree heat while, yeah. the, while parents go to gamble. And I, when I, it should be known, when I walked in, I said, how long is this going to, we, oh, yeah, we, got, we got the puppy in the car. We no one denies you're thing. caring. You just don't do anything about it. And anyway. <laughs> So uh, so that led to a brouhaha with me and Keith that I'm still not even sure he's over. I was over it. When yeah. he came out, I was yeah. already just – I was laughing because I thought the dog yeah. in the casino parking lot was a good you're, joke. You're a good not joke. that yeah. I was trying yeah. to hurt his yeah. feelings. Yeah. And, uh, but you're trying to spoonful of sugar, let him yeah. know, this is not my ideal situation. Yeah, but I also have figured out some people get jokes. Yeah. Some people get offended. Yeah. And you can't, it's hard to tell which is which yeah. sometimes. Now, <laughs> like your mother watching yeah. all that slutty filth. It was so filthy. On the uh, Tom what Brady thing. A bunch of dogs. <laughs> yes. So oh, he's. Uh... But it was like scope toothpaste. Yeah. You know, I hate this twice a day. Uh, yes. Well, I just wanted to. Uh, his discrepancy. <clears throat> He, he still claims he was sitting down at the airport in my joke when I say he's in line wanting to sit in the exit row. All right, let's, let's scratch yeah, that. Let's just say he's recovering. Let's Here just say go. you guys <laughs> ran off without me and left me behind to try and catch up and Bye fall on my ass. That part, there's no dispute. No, that's no. not. That's, yeah. that's true. All right, Mr. Stormy Daniels, you may sit down now. We got what we want. All right. Uh, hey, Lisa, come back because we have to say Happy Mother's Day and wrap this up. Come here. Come back. I want to mention while uh, Lisa is coming back that uh, with my brother, Michael, and his wife, oh, Chandra. Oh, yes. Great song. And um, my other brother, Richard, who's a great guitar player. Michael and Chandra do like uh, folk clubs and uh, coffee houses. Uh, anyway, I saw them do a song. I said, hey, could I? I've always wanted to produce a song by my family. And there was great talent in my family. My, bro my departed brother, Paul was a drummer uh richard is seriously studio level incredible guitar player and michael and chandra are the cute husband wife couple singing a folk song that you see them smile at each other and they just they just fuse a kind of love that we all wish we had don't we Lisa? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, well, and anyway, speaking of filth, get it, this off it's the a screen. Filth. <laughs> it's a, anyway, so this is a happy Mother's Day message if you're on Facebook. or uh, You could see it on YouTube starting later on Mother's Day. It's called Mama Was Right, and it was a song written about my mom, Barbara, and performed by her three boys. Uh, we also had a drummer from London who's like a world-class drummer who does sessions. And um, and the bass player is my friend Ben Carlstrom, who is my co-producer of, and mixer of Twisted Tunes for almost yeah. 30 years. I'm so, writing a song about my mother it's, uh, <laughs> called Mama Was a Cunt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, wait a minute. What are the algorithms going to do? What are my algorithms going to do? Look, no, this guy just is trashy. <laughs> we have three to 5,000 halfway decent Americans who occasionally listen to what I have to say. <laughs> I'm leaving the room. Now. Okay. Hey, kiss again. Happy Mother's Another Day. Another kiss. Hey. Another kiss. Proof. Yeah, proof of life for the cameras. <sighs> Thank you. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Andrew, uh, you can check him out at. Uh, well, don't bother with the World Wide Web. He doesn't even update that. Nobody has the web anymore. I got. I got. I've just bought a new website, actually. Oh, did you really? So. Okay. Facebook uh, is where you'll find Andrew, Andrew J. Rivers. Yeah. Instagram, YouTube, new special June eleventh. Okay. So, oh, that's coming subscribe, out. Subscribe, yeah. yeah. That's gonna be big. All right. Please support my son so I don't have to. <laughs> have a wonderful day.